Hey everyone, it's been forever since we last explored some cool new tech together. I've really missed diving into new gadgets and sharing with you how I'm using them. So a while back during a hunt for some smart home devices from within our community, I stumbled upon an intriguing device known as RATGDO. It turns out that RATGDO, I think, cleverly stands for Remote Access to Garage Door, crafted by combining the initials. However, as often happens, life and other projects got in the way and I had to put it on the back burner. So technology is always moving and there's always something new to make our homes better and our lives a bit easier. But for now, I thought we should check out RATGDO, or RATAGO, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, it's a project that's going to give our garage doors true remote capability, letting us open and close them right from our phones. Join me as we dive into this project and see what it can do, and maybe we can even make our garages a little smarter than we found them. Let's get started. Now, before we go and jump into making our home smarter, let's give a big shout out to Paul Wieland. This clever device, which costs just 45 bucks, turns your regular garage door into a smart one. I'll drop links in the description for you to check out. Now let's dive into the setup. On this instruction page, we've got everything from features to configuration to wiring, and even how to make it work with your smart home ecosystem. Whether that's Node-RED MQTT, HomeKit, or Home Assistant, you'll need to download some software for your board first, and depending on what system you're using, you might choose the ESP Home or the HomeKit version. And if you're into other systems like MQTT or Control 4 even, there's a link for those installations too. I'm all about Home Assistant, so I'll be going through the ESP Home option. If you prefer a different setup, just follow the link that matches your choice. Apologies, but I'll stick with what I know and use. No matter your choice, Radigo offers a flexible, powerful way to upgrade your garage into a smart home feature. Now, depending on how your garage door wiring block looks, there's a tailored approach for your board. So for installing the firmware, we just go over here, we have the option, like I said, of ESP Home, Control 4, Nice, Elan, HomeKit, or MQTT. I'll be using the ESP Home, so I'm just going to click on that. And now, as I said, depending on how your door wiring block looks, and mine is like this with the, the red square button, so I know I'm security one, I go ahead and I select that. The board that I have is the version 2.5i. So I am just going to select this. And then we hit connect. Now, if this fails, you may need some extra drivers or possibly even a proper data USB cable because I have seen them come as strictly power only. And that's just to get your computer to recognize the device. And if it is drivers at the very bottom of this, there is drivers here for the various different chips that are used. But once you are connected and the firmware is installed, Home Assistant allows for intricate automations and control possibilities that go well beyond just opening and closing your garage door. So before we start, let's have a quick look at our features and capabilities. So here we can see what makes Radigo a game changer in the smart home industry. Whether your garage door is the latest model with Security 2 Plus or an older version like mine, which is Security 1 Plus, Radigo's got you covered. This smart device cleverly uses the existing signal wire to not only control your garage door, but also to keep you informed about its position, whether it's opening, fully open, closing, or completely closed. And the best part, there's no need for any soldering or extra sensors. Just a few wires to hook it up directly to your garage door opener. But what if your setup is a little bit different? Say you have a dry contact door opener, like some Genie models or older Chamberlains. Well, Radigo is still on your side with the addition of some simple reed switches, which you would need to pick up separately. Radigo can both manage your door and let you know when it's open or closed. Now, as far as the features, I'll be honest with you, the matrix is a little confusing, especially on the door status here. Uh, we can see here that I'm using the E for ESP Home and I'm in Security 1. 
So you'll gain control over both your garage lights and door, which means turning them on and off or open and closed. You'll get the light status or if there's something blocking your garage door and even have the ability to activate a wireless remote lockout. But like I said, as far as the door status, I think it means that it falls somewhere between fully supported and partial support for 44 other devices, maybe. That part I don't understand, but if you're more familiar with this and understand it, drop a comment below. Your insights would be super valuable. Additionally, the ability to detect motion is somewhat dependent on your setup. It works if you have a specific wall panel equipped with a motion detector. I do not, but it can use the obstruction beams to sense movement when someone crosses over it. So there's a lot Radigo can do with some nuances depending on your equipment. All right, before we continue in the video, I'd like to take a quick moment to ask for your support. Creating content like this does take a lot of time and effort on my part, and your support helps me to continue to make more videos like this in the future. There are several ways you can support my channel. The first is to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This helps me reach a larger audience and create more content that I hope you find valuable. Second, you can share this video on your socials to others that you think might find it helpful. This also helps my channel grow and reach more people who can benefit from the information I'm sharing. Last, if you'd like to support my channel financially, you can do so by checking out the links in the description below. Any support you can offer is greatly appreciated and helps me continue to create what I hope is high quality content that you love. Thank you for your support and for watching this video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, let's talk about the hardware and software you need to bring this device to life. It's very minimal, as this is more about having the right setup than anything else. And I know, like I said in the beginning, I'm calling this thing Radigo. It's, it's a total butcher of the name. I just don't want to keep saying remote access to garage door or the device. And I've actually even believed that it might be called Rage Against the Garage Door, but I'm not too sure. So as far as hardware, this is what we're going to need. Obviously, the Radigo which is the brains of the operation. And the most recent model will do the trick as it covers security one and security two. A power supply, this is crucial. It powers the device and you have two options, but I'll just use the USB power because it's easier. Wires and a zip tie to hook everything up. So just make sure you have a few breadboard jumper wires and a zip tie to hold everything once it's installed. Now let's have a look at some of our software essentials. The Radigo software or firmware is available for free on GitHub, as we see here, or we can follow the links here in the quick start, as I did earlier. And this, of course, is what makes everything work. Now, if you want to use this from your phone, you will need a smartphone app uh, if you want to control your garage door remotely. In this case, I'll just be using the Home Assistant Companion app. And that's it. With these hardware and software pieces, you're ready to start building your smart garage system. Now, depending on your setup, as I mentioned, that will determine how you install your firmware. Also, as I mentioned, I'll be using ESP Home. So let's go through that now. Okay, so we're gonna select the ESP Home installer. I'm going to select the correct protocol. My proper board is selected here. And then now I'm gonna hit connect. So we scroll all the way down. Oh, it actually looks like it's not seeing it. One second, I think I have a wrong cable. Let's try this again. In using Linux here, I've, I've switched over to a new distribution. So I had to, uh, the problem that I had was actually twofold. One, uh, I had to grab a data cable and two, I had to disable the braille system that was blocking the driver for this device. So now that I've got that all sorted, uh, we go back here to the protocol, again, making sure that we have the select one, the correct one selected, and then also the same thing for our control board, and then we hit connect. And if we scroll down, we see our device, so we can connect to it. Oh, no, apparently it's failed. Okay, unplug it and hit connect and see. And we'll try that again. Okay. 
Okay, well, it is seeing it's connected. Bear with me as I try to figure this out. Okay, finally, the joys of Linux. <laughs> uh, I had to change some permissions. So again, protocol, board, we hit connect. We scroll down to our USB device and then we hit connect. So now it's connecting and I want to install this. So we click on it. Are we sure that we want to do this? It'll erase everything. Yeah, let's just go ahead and erase it. Hit next. And now we hit install. All right, awesome. It's complete. So now we move over to configuring the Wi Fi. So just go ahead and select your Wi Fi details. And now we can either visit the device or add it to Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and add it to Home Assistant. Uh, here, you're going to have to put in your Home Assistant uh, URL. So I'll just go ahead and enter mine. Uh, I'm using a domain, uh, but you may be using a IP address. Now we see that it is discovered. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and select the device. And do we want to add this? And then we will set an area. So for this one, it is the garage and then hit finish. Okay, so now looking at the controls, we have our door, we have our light, we have the remote lock and we have the toggle door button we also have motion and obstruction and some information from the device itself all right perfect so now we have to go and wire this up to the garage so bear with me i'll get that done and i'll be right back all right so are you feeling anxious about the wiring part well no sweat uh paul wyland and i apologize if i pronounced that wrong has us covered with some clear and helpful wiring diagrams to steer us through this. So no matter what your garage setup looks like, there's a diagram for you. For instance, uh, I'm working with the version 2.5 and it's going to be the security one, but this is a security one or two wiring diagram. So I just go ahead and click that for my specific guide. And you can see here everything that has to uh, get changed. And I do apologize to you for the hardware. I said uh, breadboard wires, but I found those to be too thin. So I actually ended up using a uh, thermostat wire. Now, <laughs> let's uh, let's take a closer look at how my installation turned out. And uh, it, I mean, it's completely uh, DIY uh, butchered. So, you know, don't uh, judge me. Um, and you might think that the, this this wiring uh, looks complex, but with the diagrams, it was surprisingly straightforward. So just find the diagram that matches your setup and you're golden. Like I said, I went a bit DIY and I just used a simple cell phone charging block running a USB power cable down to the device and it's that easy. So uh, I will mention also a quick note on the connectivity, which um, he talks about in the instructions. I just can't seem to recall where I saw that. But uh, Wi-Fi isn't a must if you're just looking to use the dry contact uh, interface, um, which you see here on this side, which is optional. But honestly, uh, who'd go through the effort of setting this all up not to take full advantage of its features? I suppose there might be a use case, but for the life of me, I can't think of one. Uh, and if you're diving in, why not go all the way, right? All right, so now that we have everything installed and wired up it's time for the moment of truth testing it out with our home assistant app and this is where we really get to see the magic happen and see our garage our smart garage now come to life so without further ado let's hit the button now look at that it is opening awesome shame 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 now we'll just go ahead and 
close the garage and you know perfect so if you head over to your home assistant dashboard either on your phone or on the computer which let's just pull that up so we can see the garage um, here and from here we could open and close our garage we can turn on our light um, however like you could go in and manually do the YAML instead of how we ended up installing the firmware. Um, but I think I'm going to go in and edit these entity names to give them a little bit uh, of a better name than, um, than this. So it's pretty amazing to think that with just a few wires and some coding, uh, we can give this level of control to our garage door. This is a great product. Thank you, Paul. But it doesn't stop there. With Home Assistant, as you know, you can create automations that fit your lifestyle. For example, you could set the garage to automatically close at a certain time um, every night, or just open it as you're arriving home with geocaching. The possibilities are nearly endless, and it all adds up to making your life easier and your home smarter. Well, hopefully. And there you have it. That's how the Radigo works with Home Assistant to bring smart functionality to your garage door. Uh, whether you're new to smart home tech or looking to expand your system, this device and Home Assistant make a powerful duo. Remember, if you have any questions or you want to share your own setups, drop a comment below. I love hearing about your adventures and solutions. Well, as we close the book on today's video of the Radigo, and its potential to enhance our smart homes. I hope you're walking away with not just knowledge, but inspiration. This isn't just about technology, it's about unlocking a new level of convenience and innovation in our homes. If today's adventure has sparked your interest, ignited your creativity, or simply entertained you, please consider showing your support. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, share it with fellow enthusiasts. And if you haven't already, subscribe to join our community of innovators and dreamers. Your engagement helps us grow and brings more exciting content your way. And remember, the journey into smart home tech is ongoing, and each step we take opens new doors to possibilities. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Stay curious, stay motivated, and most importantly, keep innovating. Until next time, take care, and let's make the future brighter, one smart project at a time. Goodbye.